Hey all you Mojotonians out there, this is Andy Johnson coming back to you from Mojotone uh, discussing the 5e3 build. Um, my prior, uh, excuse me, my previous three videos were the basics about the mechanical assembly of the uh, 5e3 Deluxe, um, Tweed Deluxe by Fender. Um, if you're just joining in, I'm, I'm basically going over the the little the build uh, uh, nuances that, that you might need to know before you really tear into one of these kits. Um, it's about basic build practices. Um, and uh, you know developing good habits on how to actually build an amp we're not going to go into you know the the entire signal flow um, the, the little you know dynamics of how a tube works in this particular circuit because there's thousands of hours of, of video and, and research and documents online that, that can explain that to you as well as this but um, what I like to do is is go in you know and, and look at the little things that that you might not, you know, if you've never built one of these before, uh, two hours down the road, what you might not think of when you go back and actually install uh, the parts on the actual board itself. Um, now, as a general rule, when we're building a fiber board, and if, if you're following in the manual, this is actually the second of the four assemblies um, that we we outline in the actual manual and the, the AMP classes that uh, either uh, John Manning, Steve Snyder, um, and myself, Andy Johnson, we, we instruct with our ant build classes. Um, so th these are the little things that, that might help you um, before you ever you know pick up one of these kits. Okay, so the fiber board assembly. Um, this was pretty common among American amps. Um, it's a vulcanized fiber board, uh, just basically rubberized uh, paper at high high temperature and high pressure. Um, very inexpensive to build, uh, very effective, and actually uh, contributed to the, the build methods of Fender how we know them today. Uh, of course, uh, you know, he took the, the Henry Ford approach. I've mentioned that in other videos, and it worked very well for him. Okay, so if we notice, we have two boards here that actually come with a kit. Um, the front, or the, the main board rather, has the eyelets in it. You have a flange side, which is the front, and just by looking at the wiring diagram that we have here, supplied in the manual and we also have online. I know that I'm looking at the front, top, and bottom of this actual fiber board by mating it up with the uh, the wiring diagram and on online. One thing you also notice is that when we put this on top, this is pretty much a one-to-one. -one. It, it, it shows you exactly not only where the components go, um, but the actual wire links that you'll need when you get this to the amp because this, this drawing is actually a one-to-one -one of the chassis itself so you can actually use this if, if there's question of wire link what you need to use you can actually lay your wire on here um, and cut it of course give yourself a little extra like quarter inch half inch so um, you know in case you run into any problems you need to resaw or you'll be able to stiffen off and, and repair it but this is a very good guideline um, I don't know of anybody else in the industry that really has something like this it was really cool it took a lot of hours uh, for Mojo to come up with this and the whole kit team so, but for now, I'm going to set this off to the side. Um, and again, when we're looking at the main fiber board, we can tell not only from the, the, you know, looking at the actual wiring diagram, we know the three big holes on the bottom left. But if you look at the front of a board, and this is true with all fender fiber boards, there is the um, crimp side of the board and the actual flange side of the board for these tur or for the uh, eyelets, rather. Marshall uses turrets. I apologize. Um, so, the larger diameter flanges go on top which is inserted through the board and crimped on the bottom so the crimps are smaller the flanges are larger to accept the actual solder that you're going to be using now in electronic terms uh, you know these these holes are huge in regards to soldering um, I'm sure a lot of you out there have seen you know PCBs that had the through hole stuff on it that is less than some of it could be less than ten thousandths of an inch um, these are very I think I want to say they're um, three thirty seconds uh, opening so you can get multiple multiple components on there uh, you know the axial leads for the caps and everything in the actual board really uh, you know really easily for this so it, it allows you a little bit of wiggle room to move parts around and, and change things out down the road which is really handy with these things because once this is in the amp you can change component if you you know ten years down the road if you blow a component it's actually very easy to, to resolder and fix um, just reheat the solder joint, pull the component, put the new component in it, re-solder, make sure you have, you know, a continuity underneath the board if you have a trace, which we'll get into later. Um, but it's very, very easy to uh, build and maintain 
this type um, of circuitry from the main board. Now, with the kit, you also get our box here that you can see. Um, this is this comes with every single one of our kits. We have different different boxes for different kits, and everything is easily labeled on the inside cover of this actual kit. Okay, um, resistors, caps, switches, tube sockets, um, jacks, strain relief, um, ground tabs, fuse holder. Everything you know is right here. Explains what it is for the actual compartment, what is in the compartment of the actual kit. Um, one thing I, I really want to hit on on you know the important process of, of making a board is that for resistors they don't they're not um, polarized and so basically what that means and this it explains it in the manual I'll grab the manual here and what that means is that um, that resistors are not polarized in this particular kit. And I, I don't know of any resistors that polarize, but it doesn't matter. Um, these use carbon comp resistors, and they can go in any way, uh, upside down, force, you know, backwards, forwards. The the only thing in this kit um, and that most tube amps have, actually all of them that I know of that have any type of filter supply or filtering in the power supply, is going to have um, electrolytic capacitors. Okay, and they're the large ones, and you can tell by looking at the cap which end is positive and which end is negative and they need to go on the board in a, in a particular direction. Um, the positive on electrolytic caps, axial caps like this, um, the spray atoms and the our king caps, the filter caps that we have, there's a detent that runs around the positive side of the actual cap itself. Um, now spray also puts a plus sign on it, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a plus sign on the cap and I'll show you one of these in the actual kit and there is a, on the king caps, there is a, a foil strip on the actual heat shrink around the cap itself that denotes the actual negative. You see the negative and the arrow is pointing to the actual negative side of the cap. So these are directional, they're polarized. They need to go in a particular way and we'll get into that as we get into the actual build of the board. Now the rest of the caps, which we have here, orange drops um, and a silver mica cap, these are not directional. It doesn't matter how these go onto the board, just as long as they're in the proper locations. Um, they do not have a positive and a negative, um, as well as the silver micas. They do not have a positive and negative. And that, that goes in here with the, the section four um, of component identity, identity rather, and orientation. Um, what's really cool, what helps me, because we, we work on, you know, John, Steve, myself, and a couple other people around there, we work on amps on a daily basis, either kid amps or, you know, sometimes we'll get in a local musician or, Actually, professional musicians will do some servicing for them. Um, and we need to know uh, the first thing when we're servicing an amp to make sure that the layout is correct and make sure that nobody else has gotten into that thing and, and really messed it up um, or put a different value in. And you can do that just by looking at the color codes of the actual resistors themselves. Um, and this is a, a legend that describes uh, the different color codes. Um, if you're doing this on a, on a regular full-time basis, um, it, there, there are apps for your phone that can actually, all you need to do is take a picture of the cap in place, um, especially if you're in the field servicing something and you can tell exactly what it is. Um, I use a couple in the shop that help all the time with this, but this is, this is a real good um, chart to actually learn so you can glance at something and know that, oh, okay, yellow, yeah, I know, purple, yellow, I know exactly that's 470K. Okay, now capacitors, like the orange drops themselves, they also have a, um, a designator on them, um, and it's an inter international designator and date code, which are stamped along the bottom of orange drops, and they're also on all other, uh, I believe Mallory 150s have them, the 170 series, the, you know, some other caps, um, metalized polyester caps will have designators on them. Um, and this, again, you can get this online very, very easily. Um, there's a whole chart that has 100 different listings on what the actual numbers are. So you can just glance at a cap and say, okay, I know this is an SB arm drop, 600 volt cap, this is a 104J. So I know that's a point, I think it's, uh, if I think about it, a point one, point one UF 600 volt cap. So when I look at that um, on a Fender uh, amp, you know, the one that's been reserviced because the, the originals didn't have these, um, you know what that is. Okay, now when we move forward into the actual board, um, I'm going to put this to the side for now, 
what I like to do, and this goes for all the construction techniques, for all the amps that we do, even in manufacturing, um, we have five full pound people that that's what they do. It's nothing but manufacturing. One thing that is uniform across the build of any new amp is that we start from basically the left to the right. And I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not in the, the mechanical assembly, but we always start from the left hand side of the bottom, say start with the tube sockets, work your way over to the right, and then we stop there. And you can either, it's your choice if you want to work back from the right to the left or stop here and then start from the left to the right. I always like to go from left to right and then left to right. That way I know that if I'm doing left or right and I need to, somebody calls me out to do something else, I can glance at an open aisle and know exactly where I was at. Okay. Um, if you start putting them in, of course these will these will take up both eyelets. But once you start getting the small components, if you look down here and you're doing both at the same time, you're doing the entire board. What can happen is that I've um, seen a lot of times that people will forget a resistor that goes in here. Um, I believe it's a 56k and a couple down here that that will be missing because they'll they'll have this fine and they'll have this well, not missing but a different value and they'll seem switched um, because they're they're called off and they pick back up where they where they left off and you know all of a sudden you've got this weird thing going on your board and unfortunately a lot of times you don't see it until you actually get in the chassis and wired up and you start to listen to it do the voltage checks so it's like oh that resistor's in the wrong place so that's one thing that you need to do um, try to do the entire board um, with the components the underboard jumpers as well as the um, leads that will be on your wiring diagram in one sitting um, try to make time for that because this is the most important tedious part other than the wiring when we get the board in um, we want to make sure that this is hundred percent correct because you have underboard wires underboard traces um, that link the circuit to the preamp to the the driver section to the output and you know of course the power supply supplies the entire board you don't want to get any of this behind there wrong because it, it really um, it gets frustrating once you get it in there and especially when you've been staring at something for two or three hours you start to make silly mistakes and I see that a lot in classes and it's normal um, but a lot of people don't realize the amount of concentration even for a small board like this I know a lot of you guys have, have built you know twin reverbs and, and service maces and stuff and this is nothing I mean this is you know for an expanders builder that you could build this in probably you know 30 minutes maybe less than that but for the beginner it's it's very uh, important that you get those basic good principle uh, building habits down so you know you'll know you start to learn over a period of time that when you lay the components out when you start soldering and, and when you have the traces and the wires on the board you'll know what you're doing um, it might not make sense to anybody else but when you stop at one particular place or you need to do something you remind yourself that I need to come back and do this after I get this component in um, as you go down the board and you know every boutique builder that I've ever run into um, does the exact same thing. It's very methodical the way they do things. Um, it's very clean. Uh, everything is perpendicular and parallel. Um, you know, so it's it, it it really helps down the road servicing. And it, again, and I said this uh, back when we were doing mechanical, is that when you build this board, you really want to think about down the road. Um, you know, when you need to service. It, this board, what's going to be the easiest for you to service it? Um, and universally, it's going to be one you want to clean. Um, it doesn't need to look like this wiring diagram. It, it, you know, it's not expected that it looks like this. Um, of course, it would be nice if it did because it'd be very rude. You know, you would see where everything is at, and you would know uh, no different than a you know a, a road map where everything is going. Um, but you'd you'd be able to look in your amp. Um, especially one of these and you know especially a lot of guys at Mojo they built a hundred of these things at least and they'll, they'll be able to you know just glance at the top of it and say okay I know that you know the leads are in place but I want to use a continuity meter to check the things I can't see and of course that's all the the under you know underlying wiring here so very important um, when you start this evolution uh, which is the second assembly for the the deluxe that you know exactly um, where you start, where you finish, and where you're at. Okay? And that's it for this video, and I will be back and describe some soldering techniques. Okay? Thanks.